Destiny has fundamentally shifted with Forsaken, and I think that what you're going to see from now on is a lot of the philosophies that we learned and demonstrated are going to be carried forward. New pursuits, pinnacle activities, raids, new weapons, and more power, more power to go after. And that's what the seasons and the annual pass are about. Every time you log in for the reset on Tuesday, something's happening in the world that's changing. It's going to be like a little advent calendar where you're unwrapping the little gifts underneath the tree, not knowing exactly what's in them. We're not trying to do DLCs anymore. We're not trying to introduce a brand new campaign. Instead, what we want to do is deliver three full seasons of content that can last for an entire year and that is coupled with the end game and matches the way players play Destiny. We're taking a really different approach this time around. We're changing that paradigm a lot. We're changing because of the player feedback. We're changing because of the reception to Dreaming City. And we're changing because players want to be able to experience the game, not just in day one feast mode. They want that buffet to last throughout the year and give them reasons to keep coming back. For Forsaken, the quote was like, it's the end game with the campaign, not a campaign with an end game. And yeah. we are definitely like adding to the end game. Seasons are really about having content that is available for all players. It's Iron Banner, Crucible, holiday events. But Annual Pass is about having this additional layer of premium content on top of that. The most exciting destiny is that kind of unexpected destiny. That is so cool, they like open up portals. Ah, we had secrets in Forsaken, and now we want to do more secrets. We, we can't talk about those, and otherwise They're they, not they wouldn't be that anymore. anymore. So the yeah. nature of trying to surprise people is that sometimes you're going to land things and sometimes you're not. The Forsaken Annual Pass is about continuing to like take those chances and take those risks and trying to surprise people with the different ways that we're going to deliver content. Dude, this is awesome. It's tasty, nutritious, and delicious. It is dead taken. Whisper of the worm. Heck yeah. Maybe. I'm not at 600 yet. I don't know if you are, nope. but like 580. 580. Yeah, 564. I think. He went on I mean, vacation. I went on vacation. So every season, we are going to be raising the power cap by 50 for all Forsaken owners. They're still going to get new gear. They're going to get to raise their power to improve their guardian. For the annual pass, we want to provide a new way for you to pursue the end game. So in Season of the Forge, that's going to be the new Black Armory Forges and a new Horde Mode based experience. In Joker's Wild, Season of the Drifter, that's going to be new Pinnacle Gambit activities that you can play with your friends. And then in season seven, the focus is really on discovery and subversion and exciting new secrets that we can't wait for players to discover themselves. But the annual pass really starts going in earnest in December. That's going to be when you're going to discover the Black Armory. You are not welcome here, Guardian. Ada is representing the Black Armory, a faction that you've never heard of before. The Black Armory is all about mystery. They're all about being the ultimate weapon crafters. Ada has been keeping the secrets of the Black Armory since the Golden Age, trying to keep them away from uh, prying eyes of the Vanguard. Keep them away from the prying eyes of the Vanguard. She doesn't really trust Guardians, but some of the secrets have been lost even to her. She needs you to go out into the world and hunt down each forge, reclaim it, reignite it, and build out the arsenal even further. You will have to push back waves of enemies so that you can actually get your components into the forge and manufacture your weapon yourself. You're the blacksmith, and you are forging those weapons. Yeah. Like sci-fi yeah. meets magic. We've heard players asking for matchmaking and activities. This new Forge activity delivers on that. We're trying to address the challenge with like Eslash Protocol and Blindwell, where we know you want to play with people, you want to matchmake with them. And so this is our first step into solving that problem. The Black Armory is these lost craftsmen who develop these special weapons that from foundries we haven't seen before, all coming from the Norse and Japanese and French family lines. 
there's three families that were involved in the Black Armory. You can definitely feel the theming and those weapons and the backstories and how they came to be and the, the roles that they perform. Izanagi's burden is the crazy sniper rifle where you have a magazine of four rounds and if you do the special reload, it actually crams all four bullets into a single round that does damage that is brutal and will like totally compete with Whisper and Sleeper. It's a sniper rifle that can body shot an enemy. That's all I need to say. The bow is from the Fringe family. It's beautiful. It feels a little thorny in the it's way it thorny, plays. Yeah. If you like Thorn from Destiny 1, you're gonna love this bow. Yotun is the fusion rifle. It goes on your hand. It goes on your hand. It's the arm blaster, as it was affectionately referred to, and it fires a giant fireball slug that will set the ground on fire. And it follows you. And it will, yeah, it will track you down and murder you. It knows where you live. So we've got five new exotics, including four brand new awesome weapons and one old favorite. We have new legendaries, including the returning archetype of the machine gun. And then we've got a bunch of new weapon mods for you to configure. And we have new perks that uh, basically, you have more options within columns. You have so more options within columns. If I had like Rampage and then Dragonfly, I could, I could choose to pick between them. Yeah, you could choose. You could choose. In Black Armory, it's about new weapons, new activities, and doing all the pursuits to get more powerful to go into the raid. We're gonna mix it up. We're gonna go to the city. Like, we've never done anything yeah. like that before, and it's awesome. And you drop straight into this old part of the city that you haven't ever been in because it's it's been off limits. It's about the unexpected. It's got vehicles. It's different in a very refreshing way. It's a throwback to Wrath of the Machine style combat. It's it's much more focused on high action, high adrenaline. Keep the throttle pegged. That'll be my uh, my <laughs> advice. We really don't want to be a box product that you think of as being on a disc. We want to be a world that evolves and changes over time. Anytime you try something new, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be scary, but we got to forge ahead. Like, the world's changing, games are changing. It's time to set a new course. Yeah. We don't want to play it safe. We want to take risks, and we want to have this annual pass explore some of these areas that we haven't done before. We think that started with Forsaken, and we liked what we did, and we want more of it.